everyone welcome back in today's video I'm gonna share one of the most highly requested videos on my channel since I started my channel two years ago I've been getting all these requests for saltfish fritters or saltfish acros and this is very popular in Trinidad it's a popular street food and it's mostly eaten with various types of chutneys or dips so you can eat it with shadow benny chutney you can eat it with tambran chutney which is most popular so I'm going to share the recipe for that today. I know each island in the Caribbean has their own recipe. This is how Trinbagonians do it and not every Trinbagonian is going to have the same recipe. This is just how I do it. So if you guys want to see how I do it, keep watching and feel free to share your recipe below. You can tell me how you do it. Feel free to send me your recipe requests. You can definitely email them to me. You can send them to me on Instagram. So if you guys want to see how I do the recipe for this saltfish acras or saltfish fritters, then keep watching. So I've added some saltfish or salted cod or bacalao into my boiling water. And what you want to do is wash this very thick layer of salt on the outside. You want to wash that off before adding it to the hot water. Because the reason for boiling it is actually to get out most of the salt that's in there. So you just want this to boil for about 15 minutes and I'm going to boil it twice. And if you already plan that you're going to make this, then a good thing would be to soak this overnight in some water. So all you would need to do is just probably boil it once if you soak it overnight. But usually what I do is I boil it twice and then I taste it to see if most of the salt is out of there and then I'll just use it as it is. And the types of fish that they use to make this salt fish are cod and pollock. So I'm using pollock today. Haddock is also used but cod and pollock are the two most popular ones. So just let this boil. I'm gonna let it boil for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna drain the water and let it boil again for the next 15 minutes and when you drain the water make sure you wash out the fish properly and then add more water to the pot. Over here I have some finely chopped seasonings that I'm gonna add to the batter. I have some really finely chopped onions here. If you know me, I don't like to bite into a very big chunk of onion. So I tried to chop it as finely as possible. And you know I have to add some bandania or charobeni, also called culantro or ricao. And you can't forget the hot pepper. I have a scotch bonnet pepper here that I chopped very finely. You can definitely omit this and use a jalapeno or any type of mild peppers that you want to use. I also chopped some celery leaf. That is going to give it a little extra flavor as well. I have some pimento peppers that I also chopped finely. These are just for flavor. Make sure when you cut into it, you smell it to make sure it's not hot because sometimes you can get some pimento peppers that are as hot as scotch bonnet peppers. So you have to be careful. And lastly, I have some chopped scallions or we call this sive back in Trinidad. So I just chopped everything very finely. If you do want to, you can put it into a mini chopper just to chop it up very fine, but you don't want it to turn out like a paste like green seasoning. And I'm also gonna go in with some Caribbean green seasoning and the recipe for this will be linked in the upper right hand corner for you guys. I'm also gonna go in with some yeast, some baking powder, a little bit of brown sugar, you can use granulated sugar as well, and some salt. So if your salt fish is very salty, then omit the salt completely. Because I boiled out most of the salt, I'm gonna add just a little extra salt so that it flavors the batter. The yeast and the baking powder are gonna be our rising agents, but the yeast is what's gonna give that nice crispy exterior. So the salt fish has been boiled twice and most of that salt has been extracted out of it and I did taste it and most of the salt is actually out of there. It really depends on the brand that you get and where you buy the salt fish. So all I'm gonna do now is just break it up. When you boil it, it's gonna be very easy to break apart. So I'm just gonna flake it. I like big chunks of the salt fish in the fritters or the acra, but if you want like a very, very fine piece of salt fish, then you can put it in your food processor. But it's really so easy to break apart that you really don't need the food processor. See how easy it is? So now let's actually move on onto making our acra batter or salt fish fritter batter. So I'm starting up with some flour and the exact measurements and everything will be listed in the description box below. So to the flour, I'm gonna add the salt, yeast, baking powder, and the sugar. Now I'm gonna add those seasonings that I chopped up. So the celery, pimento peppers, hot pepper, shadow bandana, 
onion, and the sive or the scallions. And you'll notice that I didn't chop any garlic. The garlic is actually the green seasoning. So just stir all those seasonings into the flour. Now you can add some of that green seasoning. I'm actually not gonna add too much because I already added so many seasonings in there. I'm gonna add my salt fish or my salted pollock in there. And lastly, you're gonna add some lukewarm water. And you wanna make sure the water is warm because you know we have yeast in there and the yeast needs warm water. So I want you to look closely at the batter. It's not a very wet batter and it's not a very thick batter, it's just in between. And the amount of water I used is not going to be the same amount that you're going to use. If you live in a more humid climate, you're going to probably use less than I use. So now I'm going to let the batter sit for about 30 minutes and then I'll come back and we'll start frying the fritters or the acras. So the acra batter has been sitting for about 45 minutes and if you notice, it's risen a little bit and that's because of the yeast and the baking powder in it. So I have my oil heating up, it's on medium high heat and I'm gonna go ahead and fry it. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your hand is well oiled. The hand that you're gonna use to actually put the acras into the hot oil to fry. So this is my method, how I do it. You guys can do it however you want. So this is how I like to fry the acras. I pick up a little bit. And then I squeeze through my index finger and my thumb. And you wanna make sure you don't overcrowd the pan. And go ahead and give it a turn really quick. It's starting to get brown really fast. So I want it to cook evenly and have a nice golden brown color. So these are similar to how I make pilori. I just switched out a few ingredients. So you want this to fry for about 5 minutes. So these acras have been frying for about 5 minutes and they look lovely. See that lovely golden brown color it has on the outside? That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to place these onto a plate lined with some paper towels. And I'm going to show you how to spoon it out into the hot oil using a next method. So I'm gonna use this measuring spoon and I'm gonna pick up some of the batter with it. And make sure that it's oiled so the batter is gonna slide right off into the hot oil. And I'm just gonna use this spoon to help it to come out of the measuring spoon. This is an easy method if you don't wanna get your hands dirty. And you can also use an ice cream scoop as well. You can also just pick up some of the batter and you can drop it like this. So there's so many ways you can do it. I just like to get my hands in there. So this is the last batch of acras or fritters, so I'm just going to finish frying them out and I'll show you guys the finished product. So my acras or my saltfish fritters just finished frying. So I just have them draining on the paper towels right now and I wanted you to notice that they're not all the same shape or size and that's what makes them unique. So you can actually do them however you want. I know some people do them big like a sahina, so I do have some big ones here, that was the first batch. And then you can make them small like a pilori as well. So it's totally up to you how you want to make them. So in Trinbago, the most popular way of serving these acras or saltfish fritters is with tambran or tamarind chutney. So I had this chief brand tambran chutney for a while now that I got from the Kalaloo box. So I can't wait to try it out. I'm gonna pour some in here. I also received this tambran or tamarind hot sauce, so I can't wait to try it out too. I'm gonna pour a little bit in there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the aqua recipe. Let me break into one and show you what it looks like. 
So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's really soft and fluffy and then it has that nice crispy exterior. Wow, that's really delicious. And I love the chief tambran chutney with that tambran pepper sauce. It lash, as we Trinese would say. So how I like to eat my akras is with the shadow benny or bandania sauce. So I'm gonna dip. If you've never tried it with this bandania sauce or shadow benny sauce, you're missing out, so try it. I wish you guys could taste this right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed the recipe for the saltfish fritters or saltfish acras. I know you all are gonna love the recipe, so be sure to leave me your feedback in the comment section below. I know each island makes it differently and each Trinbagonian makes it differently as well. So feel free to share how you do it in the comment section below. I know you can also add eggs to this and my second recipe is gonna have eggs in it, so look out for that one. So be sure to send me your comments, requests, questions you can email me at spoonful of trini at gmail.com i'm also on instagram at taste of trinbago so be sure to go check me out there and you can follow me and also on facebook at taste of trini so you can definitely ask your questions on there so if you like the video be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe to my channel to see all the latest videos and i will see you guys in my next one bye